<clears throat> okay, and I'm back. And what I'm obviously going to say right now is going to be a um, little bit of putting together loose ends that may not turn may turn out to not even be true at all. But <laughs> I've been through the school of hard knocks of trying to uh, figure out things that are a bit mysteriously mysterious. So I at least should take a shot at it, shall I? Okay, so here is. Um, uh, deba debatably um, debatably possible a grandson of Dr. Porton that is shown himself by some of the um, papers he wrote about Dandelion Spears being just an absolute mathematical whiz bang. And uh, there's also accounts of uh, an earlier doctor, uh, an earlier Charles Morton, I don't know, think he was a doctor, that was a dissenter and did. <coughs> Uh, immigrated over to Massachusetts, but much later, uh, that was also a learned man and pretty much almost conducted uh, <laughs> almost the, the closest thing to modern day college, college instruction that you can have back then out of maybe his own home or some office he had somewhere. Okay, and he was supposedly a mathematical genius. Um, from one of the searches I read some older book that just, you know. The author at least thought that. Who knows, right? Okay, so, you know, what exactly do we know about this article here? <coughs> it was written in the Gentleman's Magazine back in 1759. Now basically, this is a series of debates that take place about how to properly calculate, calculate the time value of money for you know, and we, what does that mean? Basically, the time value of money is, in theory, you could take a dollar, put it in the bank, and in the year you have the dollar plus interest. And so, a dollar today is not worth a dollar tomorrow. And so, a dollar ten tomorrow, if you're both figuring ten percent interest, is a dollar today, et cetera, et cetera. And they're trying to figure out the math for this, and there was a debate about it. And um, I pretty much was um, convinced that this was Dr. Morton arguing on behalf of um, one type of calculation, and there were some other people that were arguing against his type of calculation. <coughs> the question is, can I identify this more than, this is actually, by the way, from um, London Magazine, Volume 28 for the year 1759. This is also on Google Books. You can also get it at newspaperarchive.com. You can download the whole thing in one fell swoop from Google Books. It's probably worth your while to do that. And um, I am wondering. thinking here. I'm probably pausing too long while the impatient people will leave, but I only want to do this presentation for people that want to know something. Anyway, or at least take what I have and move it further. Now I can see this is definitely a at least C. Morton. It's a learned individual. Um, I'm spending way too much time trying to figure out if this is actually him or not, but Jill Gray said that she, when she looked, I don't know, I don't know the extent that she looked at this, but she said, well, this may or may not be him. And I, again, I have a lot, you know, <clears throat> have a very deep, very deep respect for, um, for Jill Gray's opinion. So he may or may not have written <clears throat> an article on annuities in 1759. So that's a bit of a jump. I guess I don't have this in date order. Then we have the letter regarding fossils. This is in 1773. And I guess a letter from Charles Morton, MD, for Mr. Adam Walker, account of the Cavern of Dunmore Park near Kilcarry in Ireland. <coughs> Sir, as I do not find in your transactions any account of the cave of Dunmore Park, about three miles west of Kilkenny, I beg leave 
to lay before your learned society an account of this singular tavern. Now this he's already a member of the Royal Society, so I'm wondering who he's, who he's addressing. As near an eye, as an eye survey and a few experiments on the stones and petrifications will admit, it is it is situated in a fine plain rising okay, so <clears throat> I'm talking about limestone and different from those in Derbyshire. Hmm. He knows a little bit about Derbyshire geography. Hmm. <clears throat> the Earl of Wandsford. I mean, basically, he reports back to some learned society, try to contribute to their body of knowledge. Many rocks on the roof and sides cavern are black marble. Beautiful stone. I guess was. Oh! This must have been from Adam Walker to talk to Charles Morton. Why did I get the impression that this was, yeah, letter to Dr. Charles Morton. Le okay, here it is. Yeah, letter to Dr. Charles M.D., Secretary of the Royal Society, from Mr. Adam Walker. So, so basically, I don't, a question I have in my mind is when these reports are given back to Dr. Morton, just how involved is, is he? I don't know. Is it? <clears throat> is it just the fact that Dr. Morton is the secretary and takes receipt of the letter? Or is he actually encouraging these people to go out and find things for the better of the society? I'm of the opinion, based on evidence that I've seen with relationship to the transit of Venus, that he was more involved in uh, actively soliciting people to obtain data for items of interest that, that the people or individuals at the Royal Society were trying to study. That's opinion, the opinion that I have, <coughs> and I hope to try to prove it, but I'm not going to immediately. Now here is the um, an account of the black canker caterpillar, which destroys turnips in Norfolk, and this is the letter to Charles Morton again, and uh, he's basically just you know, at least Charles Morton was at least open to, to receiving people's scientific findings and putting them to you know to be published for the for the consumption of the general public. This is from the Annual Register, uh, History of Politics, 18, 1783. And basically, this is all about a caterpillar, what to do to try to fight it off and keep people from losing their their crop to this caterpillar. Okay, what's next? This is 1768. This is about lockjaw and the uh, using electric electric shock therapy for the treatment of some kind of lockjaw and the formation of islands. <coughs> and I've seen this in a different form actually. I think this is also in the philosophical transactions. A lot of the content of the philosophical transactions I think was actually also published in the Annual Register, um, I guess um, the Annual Register almost may have been a generally accepted place to record items of interest for, for history. Uh, it almost seems like that. So here is, basically when I read it, there's just some poor lady that had lockjaw and they kept putting electrocution things on her and then she, her, her, her mouth moved and she was able to walk a little better but god <laughs> then here is someone Alexander Darlimple um, about the formation of islands and coral banks and etc etc I didn't get the gist of this uh, I, I didn't read this recently but for whatever reason, he's a, uh, Dr. Morton, you can see, is at least open to various accounts that come to him. Now here's some more letters, and this is in the Annual Register of 1764. And, these, and um, let's see, in this page, an account of sub subterraneous apartments with Etruscan inscriptions and paintings discovered at... Civitia Turchino in Italy, communicated from jo Joseph Wilcox and reported by uh, Dr. Charles Morton. 
Okay, and I'm not sure whether this is a continuation here with remarks on the remains. I, I certainly printed it out. I think it probably is a continuation. It's a pretty big archaeological report. And you can tell at least that the man's doing his job to collect information for the nation. Let's see what else we've got here. <laughs> 158 to 66, and this seemed like it was an unlikely part. Page 173. Now, I just don't know why I printed out so much here. It may be because I suspected these other articles after that were may have related to him. They really don't have. Um, any attribution on the other one, so it almost looks like it may still, all this may be related to Charles, Dr. Charles Morton. Here in 1759, uh, work of Dr. Charles, there's a notice of publication, uh, the Literature or Alphabetical Writing of the Learned World by Charles Morton, Large Seat, Large Sheet, P.R. Dodley. Now over here, <coughs> there is a web page where someone wants to actually auction this off, or a replica of it, Called Tablum Hank at a restaurant, a supplementus. I don't, I don't know Latin that well. I used to know it, but I, I never learned those words anyway. Um, some kind of table of alphabets. I'm not sure what he was trying to do. It seemed like here is the Justice of the Peace of the Parish Officer. It's by Richard Byrne, and. Not that the work itself was by Dr. Morton, but Richard Byrne in here. Now, I'm wondering, did he write this whole preface, or did I just... No. Okay, here it is. Um... Here's to, to take somewhat of a larger scope and investigate the marriage. And herein presuming to differ from Lord Coke, being led therein by the learned and ingenious friend Dr. Morton of Leicesterfields. Here it is, member of the Royal Society. That's just an acknowledgement for his help in getting this right. Whoever uh, Richard Byrne was, he wrote that. Here's the Journal of the Swedish Embassy by Bolster Whitlock, and this is dedicated to Viscount Lumley, which of course.